Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are thrilled to welcome Dr. Lorena Law, an integrative physician and an A4M Advanced Fellow based in Hong Kong. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. So uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, practice in Hong Kong. Where I practice uh, is with another group of integrative doctors. So we focus on chronic disease, illness prevention, and also anti-aging and trying to spend, send the message to help people understand that there is a path to preventing illness and also to optimizing health. Tell us a little bit about your uh, background. Where did you go to med school and what were you traditionally trained in? So I'm conventionally trained as a GP. So I went to medical school in Australia, Newcastle. That's where I grew up. And I finished my intern year and went back to Sydney where my family home was. And so I worked in Sydney and realized that I saw a lot of issues in hospital medicine that I felt could be potentially prevented in primary care. So I always felt the need to understand more about the human body so that I could help using diet, nutrition and lifestyle strategies to prevent people from getting sick. So um, I I did my training in hospital and I realized that um, perhaps I was better off in primary care where I could actually really catch people before they um, develop bad habits or or try to help them um, make some behavioral changes that that could really um, set them up for, for good health. So at the same time, I was also on my own health journey. And so I did a lot of reading around nutrition, exercise, fitness. And that was actually completely outside of medical school um, because I actually didn't really feel equipped at the time when I graduated to talk to people about their diet, nutrition and lifestyle. Um, I was very, very good with the prescription pad, um, but I actually discovered even in primary care that um, as a GP, that there were still a lot of conditions that medication could control with symptoms, but it didn't necessarily address the underlying root cause. So then as part of my journey and um, doing studies elsewhere and outside of the conventional training, I found colleges that taught nutritional medicine and I discovered A4M and uh, decided that it was time for me to embark on a fellowship program to really understand at a deeper level how to connect the dots and look at health and chronic illness from a completely different paradigm. And so having discovered that, it really helped to enrich the way that I practice medicine. And it really added a lot of changes and transformations to my patients. So it's a, it's a long road and uh, it's definitely not easy. But um, I think the joy of seeing patients get better and to be able to take over their health really, really encouraged me. Yeah. So how long ago did you discover A4M? Back in 2009. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 10 years ago, I went to the A4M conference and I was overwhelmed at, (laughs) it was actually in Vegas, so I was very overwhelmed um, at how huge the, the conference was. And I thought, wow, this is not just me. I'm not the only person thinking this way, that um, there are so many other doctors and people who were there to support the process. So um, I came back feeling very positive, but at the same time, (laughs) very overwhelmed. (laughs) And um, so I, I started to dip my foot into more conferences and a few online workshops um, because living in Hong Kong, I really didn't uh, have the luxury of flying all the time. So I tried to do what I could online and learn what I could online. And it wasn't really until 2016 that um, when A4N actually became more accessible online that I started the formal program and I could then pace myself (laughs) and try to learn at the same time as running a busy practice. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that, that was very, very helpful. I really enjoyed the learning 
that I went through and I'm still continuous learning. I'm actually currently doing my peptide certification. <laughs> Again, seeing really positive results and, and learning where that fits um, into all the other types of therapies that are available. Um, it really has, again, transformed a lot of my patients as well. Mm -hmm. So, yep, I'm very, very much, very happy with um, the learning that I've been going through. So uh, you have an interesting background in, in uh, fitness yourself. Um, I understand you represented Hong Kong at, uh, in Muay Thai. Yes, fitness. <laughs> fitness Can you yes. tell us about that? <laughs> so I was actually, um, when, as I was working as a doctor, I was also teaching group fitness. And I found that to be extremely um, fun because I could really help people hands on on how to move. And I realized that movement was just such a way of being able to express ourselves, being able to release stress um, at the same time, having fun as well. So one of the programs I actually teach is a program uh, from New Zealand called Les Bills Body Combat. So I actually incorporate a spectrum of different kinds of martial arts, such as karate um, and kickboxing and Muay Thai. So I really loved the movement in Muay Thai. And um, here in Hong Kong, I really got to travel to Thailand a lot. So I've really got to experience the culture and appreciate um, the techniques. So I love watching the sport. <laughs> and um, I was really fortunate uh, to be invited by the Hong Kong Muay Thai Association to be a part of the fitness team. So I wasn't really doing any kind of hitting or combat, but I was invited to really showcase uh, the type of movements uh, that Muay Thai involves. So it was a team with other two other members and we had music. We choreographed the different movements to really try to showcase the entire spectrum of elbows and knees and um, the interactions. And so we, we did that competition in Thailand and um, we, we won the competition. Oh, wow. Prize. Congratulations. So, thank you. And then uh, you didn't stop there. I understand you recently got into powerlifting. Yeah, so, <laughs> so after that, I thought, why not? Let's, uh, let's, let's uh, take a look at strength. So I was, I was very interested in strength because my mom had a history of osteoporosis. So I thought, what can I do for myself to prevent that? And so at the time, um, muscles lifting, sport, uh, that kind of strength sports in Hong Kong is not really the, the, the traditional kind of um, exercise that women went into. But I thought, well, actually, there's a lot of benefits from the studies that I looked at and could be so good at preserving lean tissue and managing weight and mm -hmm. improving fitness. And there were so many different um, types of exercises that use strength. So I thought, well, why not just go to the extreme? <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I found um, very knowledgeable coaches and trainers um, that really inspired me to look at movement and look at how to, how to move correctly. And from there, it was just one thing after another. Mm -hmm. And it was just a really supportive environment. I love getting to know different kinds of people from all walks of life. And so it was a great experience. And it was, only, it was because um, in Hong Kong, we actually have a Hong Kong Women Doctors uh, Association. And they have a team that rep represents Hong Kong in the Hong Kong powerlifting championships. <laughs> and so I was part of the association and they were recruiting <laughs> members for the competition. So in support of um, my colleagues, um, I, I joined the team. And so as part of that process, again, I, I met many, many wonderful, strong, um, dedicated women. And so for me, it was really, again, about the teamwork, <laughs> the actual the actual um, 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 winning. But um, again, I, I, was, I was fortunate I did place first in my class, in my weight class. <laughs> so it really, I think at the end of the day, comes down to comfort, like being able to push, push beyond the, the known into the unknown and to challenge mm -hmm. and to develop self-belief. Uh, so I think with, with the bench press, <laughs> I, I, was, I was somehow more, more drawn towards that. Yeah. You know, I wanted to chat with you a little bit about uh, the pandemic that we're in right now. And mm -hmm. um, how, well, first of all, how is Hong Kong um, 
dealing? Are there hot spots in, in Hong Kong? Actually, I think right now in Hong Kong, we are, the government is actually looking at creating hubs where people can travel to places like Thailand and Taiwan for business purposes. So mm -hmm. right now, um, everybody is still, that we are still wearing masks. We are still conscious of checking temperature. Um, there's things, things are open. So gyms are open, restaurants are open, but everybody is taking precautions and mm -hmm. making sure that um, people are quarantining themselves. The government provides free testing um, and people wash their hands, wear masks. Mm -hmm. um, mostly, I think, um, not out of fear, but out of respect for knowing that, you know, because we had the experience in 2003 with SARS. So a lot of people are taking their own precautions uh, for themselves. And so it's, it's not really a fearful atmosphere. I think people are just getting on with their lives. A lot of people are taking a common sense approach to it here. I read this on your, on your website um, and I found it inspiring. Uh, it says, our patients are encouraged to explore the connection between mind and body through various kinds of meditation, prayer, breathing techniques, exercise, and physical therapies that will help them find meaning and enrich their lives. Through this, we hope that each person will evolve beyond their own individual needs and become a part of a community that will help preserve our environment, natural resources, and diversity. That is aspirational. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and and a, a, a very worthwhile goal. Do you, do you find, and I've certainly, uh, you know, um, heard of studies where when people are more engaged in their community and, and feel a, a, more of a purpose in life that, uh, they are healthier. I really do. And yeah. this is really the ultimate journey that I love engaging my patients in because I feel that the physical body is something that's important, but so is the mind and so is our spirit. And I don't think we have to have a religion, but I think it's important that we all have a spiritual life so I feel that if we have a spiritual life, we understand ourselves better and we understand our purpose in life better. And so whatever, we, whatever I do in my practice, um, it is to guide people um, to find that path for themselves. Because even though I've accumulated vast amount of knowledge in my head and I think this could be the best approach for a person, it might not be their particular pathway at that time in their life. So it means that I want to meet my patients and, and the people I interact with where they are. So I want to center my approach around them and what they need. And for me really is, is about having those conversations and saying, um, what are your values? What, how would feeling better make, what, what would that mean for you? And what would you do with that extra energy? Um, how would you feel? Like, what would you do with it? And so I really um, have had the opportunity to, to observe that discovery in patients. And I think for me, like, that's, that's really wonderful because they now know more about themselves and now they can really take that knowledge on board and find their path. And I think right. really as human beings living on this earth, like, we're... We're, we're so much into consumerism um, that we forget to nurture ourselves, to nurture the place that we live and to nurture each other. Because I, I do believe that our mindset really changes um, our body's physiology. And I see this um, particularly here in Hong Kong. As when I was growing up here, I saw a lot of older people um, going to parks and doing Tai Chi and connecting mm -hmm. with each other. And that was you know, like they, I, I didn't understand at the time, but like they were my grandmother's age, but they yeah. were still so happy and still so connected and felt like there was a purpose in life and that that was their routine. So to me, in my mind, when I went into hospital medicine, that's what I thought, you know, that we should, we, we could be um, supporting our elderly population. Like it, it's really that community. So I really wanted uh, to create that. So that's the reason why, um, I wrote that piece um, to remind myself why I'm doing this every day. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I, I think that's awesome. And I, and I can imagine that you've probably seen uh, your, your patients, uh, it's been transformational, right? As they've kind of changed their, their uh, mindset and, and adopted that philosophy, that I'm sure it shows up in, in, their, in their wellness and health. Yes, it truly, it truly does. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's amazing to be a part of that journey. I'm very, I feel very privileged uh, to be a part of that for them. Well, it sounds like your patients are lucky to uh, have you as their doctor as well. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to uh, join us today. It's been a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure, sure. Thank you for having me.